Hey Titans, this is Mordecai from GamerTitan.com. In this video, I'm going to be going over a recent CC that I published. Now technically, it's an update version to a CC that I created over nine months ago, and it was one of the first things that I created in Core. So at the time when I first started Core, which was roughly nine months ago, I the, the, one of the games that I was playing during the time was Valorant, and another game that I played quite a bit was Counter-Strike. And in both of those games, they have a system that allows you to, as you get kills or you win the game and stuff like that, you get some form of currency. And then in the beginning of each round, you can then purchase various weapons, you know, like a sniper rifle, assault rifle, etc. That then allows you to be more powerful in the next round. So it's really a momentum game. And early on in core, I created that system, but at the time... I didn't understand that much of Core to make it scalable. I did put it on CC. However, I wanted to redo it because since then I've learned a lot on how to actually improve it. So let's go ahead and hop in and see what has been changed. So first things first, I have a FPS template going on right now. I believe this is Team Deathmatch. And so the first thing we're gonna do to get this component is we're going to go over to community content and we are going to type in weapon by menu and it's this one weapon by menu by mordecai and so if you click on it and import it we now have downloaded it from cc it's in our project so all we have to do is go ahead and drag it into our hierarchy now when you first drag this in if you open up the group, you'll see that there's this README. This is where I would start, but because you're watching the video, this tutorial will be more helpful, likely, than the README. So, first things first, I added a lot of custom properties to allow you as the creator to customize this. And so, when you highlight the weapon by menu, the there's quite a few custom properties and I'll kind of go through these to explain the various features that this system has. So first things first, if for whatever reason you want to disable the weapon by menu, but you don't want to lose the settings that you've already added to it, you can just click the enabled here and uncheck it and it'll turn off the entire system. You don't have to delete it from the hierarchy. If you do plan on actually publishing your game and for whatever reason you don't want to use the weapon by menu, I suggest at that point that you just go ahead and delete it out of your hierarchy to save a bit of performance in terms of objects. But if you're just testing and you just wanted to turn this off, that's what this is for. The menu binding. So what this is, is I believe I have it defaulted to Q at the moment on a US keyboard. And so if you wanna change the binding from Q to something else, the binding being what the player presses to actually open up the menu, you could go ahead and change this right here and it'll change it throughout the entire system. In terms of the currency, uh, the currency is what players start with if you have that setting checked and it's also the currency that they get when they get kills if you have that setting checked as well. And so I have it set to GT underscore cash. This is the resource that if in other elements of your game you're using this currency for other things, you probably would like you would probably want to name this the same thing that it is throughout the rest of your game. So as an example, you could just name it cash and then it uses the currency cash. Uh, one other thing to mention is as you hover over these, I did put uh, tooltips. So if for whatever reason, as you're going through these, you're not sure what they are. Um, just hover it over, over it and it'll give you a description of what it does as well. So, the other one is should give starter currency. So if you have this checked, when the player first joins the game, then they will start with the starter currency amount, which is is inputted here. And so I have it set to 3,000. And so when a new player joins or the round resets, they will get 3,000 uh, currency. That's what it will be set to. So just be careful, I should mention, be careful if you are using this resource in other parts of your game and you have this set, to true it will will it will wipe out their currency it'll set it to 3000 in this case every time the round restarts or every time they join the game so just be aware of that this weapon cell value so the other thing that this system has now that it didn't have before 
is players are able to sell the weapon back and get some of the currency back. And so this weapon sell value, because it's set to 0.8, they'll get 80% of the weapon value back. So if the weapon is 1,000 uh, currency, then they purchase it, and then they go and say, oh, you know, I want to go ahead and sell this back. They would then make 800 back. Um, other ones are should lose item on death. And so if you want it to, if you want to set it so a player will lose the item that they purchased when they get killed, you would just set this to true. The currency icon, this will show up in the menu. I guess I should have showed an example of it, but we'll go, we'll continue going through this and then I'll show you the actual system. Um, this is just an icon that represents in the menu uh, what their currency is. And so you could change this to whatever you want. Uh, this weapon, or sorry, this, this currency symbol, if this is set to true in front of the currency, it'll put whatever symbol you put here. So instead of just showing 3000, it'll show with the dollar sign in front of it, 3000. If you don't want that, you can just turn it off. Go ahead and leave that on for now. So use buy zones. So buy zones is a new feature that I added that um, basically if, if the player is in this trigger, that's the only place that they can access the buy menu. And so as an example, if the player was in this trigger, they could press Q, open up the menu and do purchases. If they walked over here, they're outside of the menu, they're outside of the trigger, and they would no longer be able to use the menu until they walked back into this zone. Um, something to mention is how it's set up is there's team one buy zone and team two buy zone. And so you could add more teams if you wanted to. Um, you just need to make sure that you, you add a new trigger and name it team one or team three buy zone. And you would want to make sure that team collision is the only thing enabled and you would want to set the team to the appropriate value. The other thing to note is if you are using this even out of the box, you want to make sure that team one buy zone is in fact where team one starts or else it'll be reversed. And so how you can do that is you can click on a spawn point. So as an example, this trigger is right over where these spawn points are. You could click the spawn point and you can see that's team one. And so team one buy zone is in fact right next to the respawn for team one. And so this is set up properly. So going back to the custom properties, um, give currency on kill. And so one of the biggest requests that I had from the old system was players wanted to be, or creators wanted to give players the ability to get currency on a kill. And so this one, if you have this checked or set to true, every time they get a kill, in this case, they'll get 500 currency. This allows them to use this currency to buy other weapons. This gives starter weapon. So one thing is if you are using one of the frameworks um, in the in the hierarchy, you'll have this starter weapon. Um, so you could just type in starter weapon or starting weapon, I should say. And you'll want to, if you're using this, you want to delete it. Um, reason being is the weapon buy menu takes care of that for us. And I was having some trouble getting it to work out of the box with this system. And so best case I could think of is just implement my own starting weapon system into it. And then we just go ahead and delete that. If you don't do that, there are cases where the player could purchase a weapon and then they respawn and then they'll have two weapons equipped. So this takes care of that. That was a, a big bug that it's not really a bug. It was something I didn't understand as a creator early on. And so I wanted to create this system where others didn't have to deal with that. And so if you do want to give a starter weapon, if this is checked, just be sure that the starter weapon actually has a template. And I will, I guess I could hop over and explain how to set that up real quick. So in core, if you go to core content and you type in weapon, uh, there's several weapons that core gives us access to. You could use community content weapons and stuff like that, or even create your own weapons. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use these as an example. So say that we wanted to give them a advanced knife. What you want to do is if you're using core content, you want to, you want to throw it in your project first, save it, then delete it. 
And the reason for that is, is if you don't do that, if you just, if you just take something that has never been in the project and you drag it in as the starter weapon, um, you will have errors. And it's because I believe Core actually doesn't, uh, your project doesn't have a reference or something to the actual weapon until it's actually been in your project and saved. So if you get any sort of errors, be sure to, to just drag whatever you're trying to reference, throw it in your project, save it, then delete it. Then once you do that, you could then take the weapon and just drag it into starter weapon. And now when the game starts, everyone will start with this advanced knife. Um, and then the next one is uh, reset currency on round end and lose items on round end. And so if these are both checked, if they purchased a weapon during the game and then the round resets, they will lose whatever weapon they purchased. It will then equip the advanced, in this case, the advanced knife back onto that player. It will set their currency back to 3000. Uh, and yeah, so that's what these do right here. So the only other thing that you really need to mess with uh, out of the box here is um, if this is still blue, it means it's still a template. So you could go ahead and deinstance this object. And then what you have access to is these items. So under weapon buy menu is this items group. So this is where you'll actually add in the various weapons that you want to purchase or allow players to purchase. So this is all dynamic. It's set to just based on UI space at the moment. You can only have up to eight uh, weapons. And by weapons, it could be other equipment. So like if you had armor or other things, as long as it's an equipment, it will work with this system. So under items, I have this example here. And so if you click on the example, whatever, whatever you name the object will be the name of the weapon. So I have it named example. We can name it pistol. And then in the actual buy menu, this item will be called pistol. Similar to the uh, enabled, up on the on the weapon buy menu here if for whatever reason you're you are working on a weapon but it's not fully finished you can just uncheck it and then the system will ignore it that way you don't have to delete it and lose your progress so if for whatever reason you have a bunch of weapons and they're not showing up just be sure to check that they're they are actually enabled because if nothing's enabled then the system won't work in terms of the id here um, this is a string and this is only used as a unique identifier for the system to know which weapon uh, this is referencing. I would suggest making this as small as possible. And so as an example, because we change it to P or pistol rather, I would just make it P. This does need to be unique. So be sure you don't have two weapons with P or else it will cause issues. So just like I said, make sure it's unique. The icon, this is what the icon in the, in the menu will show for this particular weapon. And so in this case, it's a pistol. The description, I don't believe this is working just yet, but in the future, I will make it so, depending on feedback from you guys, um, if, if you guys want some sort of like hover, like tool tip, like as a description and like giving some form of information in terms of like damage and stuff, that's something I was going to add, but haven't done so just yet. But the description as an example, you just, you know, starter pistol. So the cost is how much of the resource uh, this weapon will cost. So for example, if we wanted to make it 500, we would just make it 500. And similar to the starting item that I just showed you, because we're gonna use this advanced pistol, we wanna drag it into the project, we wanna save, then we can go ahead and delete. And that, once again, that's only if you've never had this item uh, in your project before. So now we just drag this advanced pistol over as the template, and now we are ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll... Okay, so if I press Q, now I can purchase this pistol. So I have $3,000. If I click this, I can now purchase it. 
And then if I get killed, because I have that bullion checked, I believe. And now, by the way, I'm outside of the trigger. So if I press Q now, I can't access the menu. On this character, we didn't set the trigger up in this area. Or I guess we did. Hmm. I will need to fix that. So basically, if the trigger... All right, so there's there's a few bugs, but we'll, we'll get it solved. So because I purchased the pistol on this character, if I kill this player now, it should re-equip the knife, which it did. And now I have 2,500 uh, currency, so I can buy the pistol again. And as you can see, by the way, I bought it for 500. We have the sell value set to 80%. And so now if I sell it, it unequips it. And I have 2400. Then I buy it again now. So I could just keep doing that. Not recommended, but at least it gives the player the ability to, to sell items back. And so to show you how easy it is to add a new item, all we got to do is copy and paste under the items group. We just copy and paste this. We'll name this sniper. We'll drag the the advanced sniper rifle in, then delete it. We will make it the reference. We'll say this is a thousand. Uh, change the icon. So if you're looking for good icons currently, because I know Core is adding new assets all the time. As of this video, if you just type in survive or survival, there's quite a bit of good icons. Uh, if we scroll down further here, here's the sniper rifle. This is shotgun, but it looks like a sniper rifle to me. So we'll go ahead and use that. We need to change the unique ID. We'll make it S. We'll just say sniper. So now, if we fire up the game, there's a new item. Press Q, and you can see that the sniper rifle is a thousand. So it works. And then for whatever reason, if I wanted to sell it, sell it back by the pistol. Now I will say right now, it the system only works with one weapon. In the future, I may allow I may update it to allow players to have multiple weapons because I know in games like Valorant and Counter-Strike, you can have a primary weapon, a secondary, and then like a knife or a melee. That is something that I do want to do. Um, currently, the system works with one. If you want to take a crack at updating it, then feel free. Uh, one other thing I'll mention is in terms of the UI, um, I just tried to make it as basic as possible because this is something that you as the creator likely will want to update. Um, and so I can show you how to set that up. So under the system folder is the client context and then there's this UI group. So the menu container, if you force this on, this is the default menu. And then inside of the items parent panel, this is the actual area where the items will spawn in. And so under the client, the uh, GT underscore by menu client, there's this item panel template. And so if you click on the find asset in catalog and you drag it into the item parent panel, it will show the actual placeholder. And so what you can do is you can go through and edit the template. Um, so say for whatever reason we wanted to make this, you know, pink, we just update the template and then delete it. Make sure that this is the menu container is left to force off and we press play again. And now all the weapon background is pink. So it's relatively easy to modify. And like I said, I just kept it very basic. So you as the creator can turn it into whatever you want. It's better to have it basic than to have too many elements on it. 
and that's pretty much it so i will say uh currently the system doesn't tie into the basic game state manager uh one mistake i made with cc early on was i actually added references to things and left them in so as an example the reason i have the starter weapon cleared out like there's nothing there by default is if i left that in there it would it would bring it along in the template and it would wipe out like like for whatever reason in the future if core updates the weapons and this advanced knife was the old version and you brought the cc in it would cause all sorts of problems because it would revert the weapon scripts back to the old version um so that's why i'm leaving these as cleared out so as always if you have any questions go ahead and join my discord that's the best place to you know do bug reports feature requests uh, if you have any ideas on other functionality that you would like this component to have uh, go ahead and send me a message in the discord if there's uh, anything in the future in terms of cc that you would like you know feel free to reach out anytime if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments that retain just to the video go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and if you want more correlated content please hit that sub button as it helps me out and inspires me to make more videos and it shows that there's an audience for the type of content I'm making. I will catch you next time, Titans, and I look forward to seeing all the creations you make with the CC component. Take care.